and I had I had a friend, yeah, uh, some some uh, some years ago that uh, that decided to not live anymore. That's like what I'm often tapping into, like why I do what I do is like for him and for for everyone else out there who feel they are alone and feel that there's no one listening. This is Stefan Taylor, a professional dreamer bursting with positive energy and inspiring quotes for any occasion. You are as sick as your secrets. This session only becomes about quotes now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's now spreading his vibrant light on YouTube as the newest face of one of the biggest channels in the world. Do you want to join Yes Theory? It's a yes! Some of my friends is like, wow, Stefan, you're living the best life traveling. And it's like, if people don't know, like, I'm struggling, everyone is struggling. So what's the reality of being catapulted in front of 8 million subscribers? And how has this new chapter truly impacted Stefan? I got a heartbeat now, you start you saying that. It's <laughs> my <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Creator Confessions. Comfortably uncomfortable conversations with creators on a couch. Yay! Yay! Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. Well, let's see about that. Stefan will be answering three questions, one from each jar of increasing degrees of vulnerability. If Stefan chooses not to answer, there will be a very severe punishment. You will have to go out on the streets in public and make a beautiful motivational speech using three words. Pina colada, mm -hmm. indigestion, mm. and toothless. Okay, 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 I'm gonna be fully vulnerable today because I'm not saying that was <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to talk my out of this situation. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go for this one here. What is it really like to join Yes Theory? The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I think the good is extremely, extremely big, so I'll use the word grateful. Like, I'm extremely grateful to be allowed to express the things I care about in the most in the world. Like, I try to take myself slightly, but the things I care about deeply, and I care about to kill loneliness and create communities. And I think that's like what embodies Yes Theory, creating communities around the world. So that's like the best part of it, trying to find those people who sits behind a screen or at a, is at a meetup just to together create the best community out there. I know that that's something that's been really true to your story, right? Like you felt very lonely in the past mm. and that's been one of your biggest missions in life, it seems, to help people feel less lonely. So I guess the alignment with Yes Theory is it's like a match made in heaven in that sense. Yeah, no, for sure. It's like it's like that day we met on the streets of Sweden. I come back to that now. I could like see the spark in Thomas and Thomas' eyes. That made me like say yes in that moment, and that made me get friends and a community, and then together creating that. Because I've been on a long mission, how you say, to try to find my community where I can like make a greater impact on the world together with. And it feels like I really found that. Yeah. They found me on the street. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find someone in Sweden yeah. to swap lives with someone in Texas for 72 hours. Could be possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a longer story from like high school times and being bullied and having acne and, and uh, being called names and all that stuff and closing myself and having a scarf to like, you can maybe see it a little bit, but I have a scar here on my neck. And when I was younger, like it was very clear. So I always had a scarf and was covering myself because I didn't want people to find other reasons to common but at some point i i decided to throw that scarf and show myself more and that was a journey too hmm. by itself and you're saying that one of the things for you was people were bullying you because of that and so you've always felt lonely and yes theory was in a way someone that helped you unlock that sense of community that was not present in your life before well i would say it's different steps on the journey being in high school having some rough moments, some rough times, not having a tribe and feeling a sense of community. And then I started to tap into that and challenge those fears that was blocking me for getting into moments that could transform me. Sometimes people say that to change yourself, it can take a long time, mm -hmm. but I believe you can change yourself in a, like even by an hour, as Amar often refers to with skydiving, he says that in one hour, you can transform your own life by going, jumping out from an airplane or a helicopter. <laughs> but back to the high school times, that was more like reading a book. What happened to my transformation by reading a book? What happened to my transformation by speaking in front of people, even though I was afraid? What happened to myself if I attended an event, even though I was very scared of not being able to socialize to talk to people and I just kept on expanding that and I described it in three areas the comfort zone the development zone and then the panic zone and I wanted to avoid the panic zone because I don't think anyone feels good in the panic zone everyone can find that self right is this 
an excuse or is this actually me totally panicking? And it's a fine line, right? I don't have the answer for anyone else, but I can only search and find the answer for myself. Like, what has that fine line been? I'm feeling fear, but I'm pushing through. Fear stands for faith, everything arises. I have to live that now. I'm curious with your latest episode with the sky, the skydiving one, mm -hmm. because you look like you are physically, like, for me on the on the verge. Like that fine line was very fine at that mm. point. Were you able to identify in that moment? I guess you did because you jumped out. Where is the panic and where is you actually wanting to push past that comfort zone where you knew that you could overcome what yeah. was on the other side? In the video I said my whole spirit is you screaming yes 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 I want to do it with my ego. I was saying like no don't do it so I really wanted to do it and then I needed to talk to my own body and I talked uh, with it by having all the energy in the space from like Amar, Thomas and Tommy which I think was so beautiful in helping me in that way push through that fear and then also by breathing and used breathing and breathing. Amazing and in terms of like the second part of the question like there's not really anything bad or ugly in terms of being in yes theory, it's mm. all on the other side. Is there anything else that comes to mind, but maybe not necessarily bad or ugly, but that surprised you? Well, I would say one thing is to really try to take care of your uh, mind, body and uh, soul, because doing all these things, it takes a lot out of you. So I would say like taking care of ourselves while pursuing all this, all the basics of like sleeping, eating, me time. So I try to reduce stress as much as possible in my life. So that becomes, gives more access to energy. And I think energy is the currency. I have something I call a cortisol map, like to look like where is most cortisol released in my body. I'm no professor or scientist, but I know that cortisol is released when we are stressed. Do you feel like now that you've become a YouTuber and you're out in the public eye that your cortisol levels have increased. I would say I was really really bad at it. I think it's an always continuous process. I'm still learning. You some years ago I was like tapping in too much to other people's problems and understand me correctly I never gave so much of my heart to other people as I'm doing right now. Two years ago sitting in my sofa in my apartment in Stockholm, Sweden, crying my eyes out of myself because I had put too much of other people's weight on my shoulders and I start, went from loving life to liking life. What was it for you that helped you get back to loving life? It was to really dig into becoming best friend with myself and really start to listen to my needs. Mm -hmm. When people ask me out to do an event, but I need me time to actually take the me time. I need to listen to that. And I think I can hear my voice clearer than I ever done before. We already had this conversation and uh, if you're willing to share about this as well, I think it's a beautiful thing for other creators to hear as well of how you've been dealing recently with the noise coming in from thousands of people who are now watching you online. And First of all, the first ever post I did on social media, it's like 10 years ago, I did a post of me following my dreams <laughs> with like the scars on my neck from the acne and, and so on. And one of the comments was, get a job. I was like, damn, it was so hurtful. Today I can smile and look back at it, but at the time it was the worst thing that could have happened. That post is still there and <laughs> we can just blur out the person because I think that hurt people hurt people. And uh, I can only feel love, extra much love and empathy for people who are trying to drown other people's voices. Since then, I've been like trying to go into empathy. A lot of comments that comes on the videos and um, <clears throat> I try to focus on all the positivity. I also try to not look too much in the comments either. I see some comments maybe. Samas English is not good. And I was like, yes, I know. I know I'm, I'm trying to do this for all of you who don't have perfect English. <laughs> for all of you who don't have perfect English, I'm here for you to be the voice if you don't have the voice. <laughs> so, uh, so, so yeah, so, but I try to like stay in the voices of Thomas, Tommy, Amar, other Yes Fam community members, because I think the true ones are the ones that are actually supporting. You yeah, did that's the first definitely one. level one. Okay. Okay, congratulations. Thanks. Thank man. you, thank you. <laughs> you ready for question two? Yes, question level two, two, yeah. Did becoming a YouTuber bring up any insecurities that surprised you? Hmm. Wow, great question, guys. <laughs> yes, insecurities 
came that surprised me, but that's the first thing that comes to me. <laughs> I found something in myself that I never found before, being exposed and vulnerable and just doing your own thing, is that I had to really deeply do it, not for myself, but for my eight-year-old self. I just wrote a letter to myself and what does stuff an eight-year-old need to hear? What do I need to do for that person? And then I wrote a letter to an eight-year-old person of myself like, what is that person saying to the eight-year-old and to current Stefan? And some of the words in that letter was to don't give up on yourself, like step into your full power. And the letter ended with, if you dare to jump, the universe will catch you. But do you dare to jump? And I ended with writing yes. For me, stepping into this, yes, insecurities can be exposed or exposed, but it's also for me of stepping into something bigger than myself. And then also for my mission of killing loneliness. I really want to do this for all the people that feeling lonely, physical lonely, but also in a room with other people and feeling emotional lonely. And I think we need to break that once and for all and try to create a community that, that eliminates that because there is a lonely world out there. And, uh, and I, had, I had a friend, yeah, uh, some, some, uh, some years ago that, uh, that decided to not live anymore. And uh, I, know I don't speak about that so often, but it's like, that's like what I'm often tapping into, like why I do what I do is like for him and for, for everyone else out there who feel they are alone and feel that there's no one listening, that we need to uh, together, like you step up into our mission for not ourselves, if not for ourselves, like for those other people. And that makes like other people's comments about me, etc., become very small. And those insecurities like almost disappears when I'm in contact for the bigger mission. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you guys. I'm curious, is there a particular insecurity that has been the hardest or the most persistent for you in terms of knowing you have this mission and you're fully driven with this purpose of making people feel less lonely, but there's mm. this one insecurity that keeps consistently coming back and trying to pull you back. I would say it's imposter syndrome. It's like that I'm at the wrong place. My soul knows that it's the right place, but my fears and my, my, my self-esteem can say like, are you really the right person here? There are so many other people that's better than you or stronger than you or more intelligent than you or more connected to their heart than you, etc., etc. Like, are you really the one that's gonna do this? And when that noise becomes loud, it's like, Oof, am I really that one? Maybe it is someone else. But what's been helping me is to be with people who reflect my light, because when I can't reflect my light, when I can't find the reflection in, the mission or something else, then it can maybe be someone who said, yeah, Stefan, let's go. Like for example, when we did a, we did a video of uh, the best sumos in the world in Japan, and I was left alone uh, for 20 hours with these uh, sumos. It was so much trust from Tommy and Thomas. They were like, just looked at me and they were like, yeah, you got this, take the camera here and have fun. <laughs> just by saying that, like, give so much trust and confidence. Like, okay, if they believe me, I can do this. But if I would be there by myself with no one else, I would probably be like, oh my God, what's going on here right now? because I could sense the insecurity, but having other people reflect my light gives me a boost of just going for it. Do you have any advice for other creators or just people in general who are trying to find those people who reflect their light? I had a great conversation with my dear friend Amira Adeb. She's from Egypt. She said, be as cringe as you possibly can be. Be you as much as you can be. That will allow other people to find you and see you. Be the weird light out there so the weird lights can find you like that's the way i like to say it to be able to do that i think only one can answer for themselves but for me it was to take the small steps first we can maybe step out on the street and say something that we want to say to the waitress or someone the tax taxi driver or we used to express ourselves a little bit often when i express myself i can feel a little bit of shame in my body that shows courage right i like to imagine on myself that instead of having shame i put on a courage medal and i even do this symbolically over my head so if you see me doing this on the street sometimes <laughs> it will be like the courage of metal i'm putting on because i still feel shame when i put myself out there sometimes it's like oh, did i expose myself too much and then afterwards people can reach out thank you for saying exactly that word i needed to hear that now i got a message on instagram um, i read it today actually i did a cohort the other day with creator now i spoke about like addiction problems and it was a person and i had that in my family and and so on and it's quite private and afterwards i felt a little bit of you know shame oh did i share too much and then i got this message from someone like really opening up about that and really needed to hear exactly what i shared about that thing so i think um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we just like, if people don't know, like I'm struggling, everyone is struggling and we just need to be in the safe spaces and places, uh, be ready to share that because people are ready to help us, right? I don't think it's the right place in all the places, but the right places to share that and to set that free because then if we carry it too much, like we need to set it free. I'm, I'm curious to, because for us, a big thing with what we want to do with Creator Confessions is to talk more about the human experience of creating. If you had to just say three, like top mm. three mindset shifts that would really help mm. navigate the journey of a creator on a human level, mm. what would those be for you? Mm. Great question, guys. I love, <laughs> I love Creator Confessions. <laughs> My own truth would be, be inspired by other people. Look at other people, but don't compare yourself with other people. And don't try to think that you're gonna have the same journey as someone else, because you will not. Yeah. That's their journey. And it's also of living in a compass instead of a map. A map is that you think that you figured it out and you know where you're going and what's happening. It's like having a map over Los Angeles, but you are in New York. But if you are living by a compass, it's like you can be in any city in the world and you can still find your way. In the map, it's filled with like, I'm gonna achieve this at this age. I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna change to that. I'm gonna have this and then that. Like the day I met Thomas and Tommy, that was one of the weekends I had the most work to do during the year. I was gonna have a big, super big conference in Sweden, but I even canceled a date Friday evening <laughs> that I couldn't go on because I wanted to work the entire weekend and prepare for that conference. Friday afternoon, <laughs> I meet Thomas and Tommy. <laughs> wow. They ask me, do you want to swap life and go to Texas? If I would be looking at my map, I wouldn't even look at them. I would just think about my preparation and what I had to do. So I'm going to work hard, I'm going to deliver on that conference. But what happened was that I was more in my compass. I saw people have spark in their eyes. So I was like, ah, screw that other thing. <laughs> Let's go to the other side of the world. Thank so, God you took that decision. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe to just add on that, like have your ideas, have your plans, have your strategics, but don't let that be bigger than life itself. So you show up leave it out and see what can appear. Amazing. And what about the third one? So the third thing is do what your heart is calling you to do. Do what you love, do what you feel inspired by. To be able to do that, I think we need to try out a lot of stuff. It took some years for me to find it, but when I found that I really, really love to engage with people and I want to build bridges, that was like my true inspiration that I can do for free and I can do it every day and I can do it forever. Sometimes people do stuff out of motivation, I think out of an ID, but I think we need to do deeper than that because if we become big then in whatever we're doing and we don't like it and we build the biggest cage we ever can build, right? And then we need to do content that we don't even like, we don't resonate with. So do what you love. We personally have gotten stuck in that as well. We did the first video ever with strangers and it took off. It's the biggest video for us. Let's just do more of this. And so we started doing more and more and more until the point where rage totally burned out. Mm. I was not having fun. We felt exactly like that, this cage that we were trapping ourselves in. And just now we're stepping away. And that's why like this is something that comes so much more from passion of like, it's just something that is so true and it makes it so much more sustainable. I love that. Thanks for sharing and thanks for doing what you love the most. <laughs> giving questions in a jar because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the comment probably, get a job. <laughs> yeah. Get a jar. You ready for the ready for three? three? Oh my. What is an invisible struggle that you are dealing with right now that you are scared to admit even to yourself? Hmm. What I've been trying to do for 10 years and I still need to remind myself about it to keep on being myself regardless other people's opinions, regardless amount of views, regardless fear, regardless doubt. Mm -hmm. to keep on listening to that voice and that's the only thing I need to focus on and that I'm super scared of that I will lose but I'm trying to tap into other people's words that reflects upon me I'm trying to tap into my wish and mission and my and our wish and mission like with yes theory to like really step into that mm -hmm. and keep on being me that's that's like and that's, I'm afraid of losing that why do you say you're afraid of losing that have you had any glimpses or signs mm, every day mm. <laughs> every week every month yes like moments of like stepping into something that someone else's expect or something like you just go back go back go back i think that goes back to living in the compass as well because my version of myself is changing mm -hmm. along the years and having the compass with me as well to step into being as much as me and it's so vague sometimes right like what is that but i think that's an evolving and 
always changing process and it changes over time. Some things I loved three years ago, I don't love anymore, but I loved the things that was then and now I try to love what's here. Mm -hmm. And then in three years, we'll see. Let's say specifically on YouTube, what percentage of that would you say is your authentic self? I would say my full self. Mm -hmm used to be a little bit Swedish, I would say 1% is not me. <laughs> used to be, but I would say I would say my full self and that's thanks to the, the community that's allowing my light to shine. And then it takes for me to just go into it. Like you've immediately been plugged into 8 million people mm. watching you as so many more eyeballs. So do you ever feel like that stops you from being your full self or gives you some extra doubt of, should I say this? I don't think about it so much, it's my honest answer. I try to just leave the moment and go for it. That's why I'm trying to not tap in too much to other people's voices and noises. As long as, I'm know, that I'm, as, long as I know that I'm doing it for a cause I care about, mm -hmm. that's enough. I try to always live in the present moment and not live in the future because that often creates anxiety for me. If I live in the past, it often creates a separation. Like when I'm in the present moment, that's when I'm happiest, feel most grateful and most happy. So that's like the best place I like to fry from and then see what comes. It's crazy because I feel like it ties back so much with your identity in the sense of I know you consider yourself a professional dreamer. Yeah. And I heard someone once ask you, what is your biggest dream? Mm. And you said to be present. Mm, you know that as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we do research on this hey, show, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, but that's amazing that you found that as well. Yeah, that is my answer when someone asks me what's my biggest dream. Because what else is there to dream about than what's actually happening right now? Tell me one bigger thing than to sit with you guys here. Like we can have a conversation, we can look into each other's eyes, we can talk about life. If I wouldn't like to be here, then I'm not true to myself then I need to look at that. Where should I else rather be and try to be at that place? But it's no other place I'd rather be than with you right now. And that's the best present moment. And the more we can be clearer to our own voice, the more integrated we can be and the more, the more integrity we can have. And the more true we can be, the more closer to our core we can be and the more present we can be. Mm, that's so beautiful. I think I never said it before, but that was good that shit! Was, that was good shit. <laughs> Respect! <bro. laughs> humble, 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 humble. Humble is a really good one as well, right? To always stay humble. Is there anything else you want to say before? Well, in the beginning you pushed me. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Russian hug. <laughs> thank you what you're spreading out to the world. The world needs it, so thank, thank you. you. I needed it.